Hi friends, it's Liz here at Liz the Paper Project. Today I have this really fun uh, little mini album, junk journal, not sure what you want to call it. And um, I had so much fun putting this together. I was inspired by Septeria 18, which is where I saw um, the one that she had made. And um, I will link her channel below as well. Um, hopefully you'll find some more inspiration there. Um, but let me just walk you through what I've done. There's uh, this is like a layered album, which I absolutely love. I've used some pieces from In Love Art Shop, which is the dies. Um, and this one is the little corner pocket here. She kind of did similar um, in her work and I just um, I just loved it. So um, I've done that here. I've also used some pieces from Your Creative Studio, which is some of the stickers that she sent in her July kit. And um, Oh my gosh, I just love how everything turned out. So I will just be kind of putting the names of the dies that I used on the top bar here so you can see what dies I used from In Love Art Shop. Um, and I will link both um, videos, uh, unboxing videos that I have made below for you to check out. This was one of the dies as well. And then I made this tiny little paper clip because I was working on another mini journal and I just kind of had some extra pieces. So. Um, I made this one for this page. Now, this can be used as an album, as a little mini photo album, um, you know, as a a little quote book, or even just like as a little coffee table book for inspiration. I just kind of love the idea. And I was so happy to kind of get started. So I will show you um, after the flip how to put some of this together so you can make your own. It was so much fun using leftover paper bits and you know, just things that I had uh, previ previously um, made, like with the die cuts and stuff, and I just wanted to find a place to put them. So I hope you enjoy the share. I hope you like the tutorial. It is coming up. Um, but as I said, I will also link below the unboxings for both videos, um, or for both shops, I should say, that I've previously done. And hopefully you'll find some fun things there as well. This little paper clip I made with a little pocket here and then it's got a tiny little flip up. Now I don't know who initially made this. It's been made a, uh, by a few people and I was inspired by that as well. So I don't really know who to mention for having um, made that style of paper clip. So here's a little pocket, a little journaling space on that page with a sticker. This is another ephemera piece from uh, your creative studio, which I just added, um, you know, just to the pocket there to the page. The next one is um, a little envelope flip out that I added. Um, I had previously made that as well. And I just, you know, I was using my extra pieces, extra paper. That's what I love about this project. You can use your leftover paper from projects that you've um, made before. This can be any size you want, any style you want, and you can decorate the pages however you would like. So that is the best part, I think, of this project. On the left side here are pieces that I used from Your Creative Studio, which was the stamp. I just put that on vellum. And then the little one of the stickers that she had in the kit, which I love how this looks. And then on this side, I just used one of the dies for the little envelope or the pocket. And then on the back, I left an opening to be able to tuck something else in. So as I said, this was just a fun, use your scrap kind of project. Um, I hope you like the share. I hope you enjoy the quick tutorial. And as I said, I will be linking below the original one that I saw that inspired this project. And I can't wait to make many, many more. So here comes the tutorial. So what you will need is um, whatever size you actually want to end with, I would suggest you pick the largest page for the back. Um, I prefer to use a double-sided paper for this, but you don't have to. You will see that I actually select a piece that is just a single-sided cardstock. These ones happen to be journaling cards that I had, and I thought that would make a perfect page. Um, I've got some double-sided and single-sided pages, and of course, I'm just trying to select, you know, what will be the front, middle, back, etc. You can make as many pages as you want, um, but I did find that this type of paper is kind of flimsy. Um, if you use a little bit thicker cardstock paper, like, you know, the paper pads from Michaels and stuff like that, it's probably a lot better to hold your ephemera or whatever you will be adding to your page. Um, but again, this is to use leftover scraps, which I think is so fun. As well, 
um, you'll need smaller pieces, more like the ones that I have here at the top, the little ones. Um, again, the flimsy part I wouldn't recommend because we will be using the smaller pieces to bind the pages together. And that's another thing I love about this project is there is no stitching and no uh, stapling. It really is just paper and paper. Now you can also probably use fabric to bind it, but that's um, a whole other thing that you could try. Um, I thought also six by six paper pads that we all have little bits of would be great to make a page or even to, um, you know, just to add ephemera, etc., to this little album slash junk journal, etc. So here are the pages that I have selected. And, um, you know, you can see kind of it's starting to take shape. The different sizes and lengths are better for layering. So the back page is basically what sticks out the most. And this one happens to be about eight and a half by approximately four and a quarter, I believe, or four and a half. So four and a half, eight and a half. Uh, folded in half, this will make my back pages. And then from there, I've just gathered some additional pieces that I thought would go really nicely. Again, layering the lengths, the, the heights, the widths. I think that just gives it a, a more interesting project. And again, you can use whatever you want. So um, this one happens to be single-sided cardstock. And then of course you saw the piece that I'm using from the Edith Holden book page as well. So now, um, you know, I'm kind of trying to get an idea how I want my pages to be layered. And now I'm going to select the pieces that I will be using for binding. So she suggested two inches wide for your binding. And then of course you'll have to measure the um, length of your page, um, how you're going to bind it. So particularly for this one would be my first page. Um, I would have to cut a piece that fits between three and a half inches because I'll be using that binding a piece to attach to the next page and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So I've cut up my pieces. I'll be using three for this project. that are approximately two inches um, wide and then the height it really depends on your page. Um, also be mindful of you if you're using any pattern paper that it faces the right way. Um, so and I also like the contrast that I've you know I'm using one of the pieces for binding that I used for one of the pages as well so use up your scraps my friends so here you fold it in half and then what you'll be doing is attaching it to both pieces of paper to um, basically make the hinge to attach the pages so I like to use wet glue for this part um, and also um, when you are adding the glue make sure that you don't add glue all the way to the top of that edge um, at the top of the binding. So as you see here, I'm not going all the way to the top. I'm kind of sticking more to the bottom and center parts of it um, because you'll need to leave a little gap between pages so that it, um, it folds out properly. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Here I'm just still trying to figure out which pages I want to use where but I think I'm going to stick with my original decision of these are my first two pages that I'll be attaching together. So make sure again, things are facing the way that you want, the right side up. And here I'm just going to line it up so that it's somewhat centered and I'll be attaching it almost to that edge, but not quite. So as you can see, I leave a tiny little gap between the um, hinge and the page. And I'll be doing the same when I'm attaching the other side. So I'll show you one more, um, I guess, process of doing the page attachment. And then what I'll do is I'll probably speed up the rest so you can just see how I'm adding the pages. Now this project, um, I thought the tutorial would be great for just showing you how to make the little booklet, album, scrapbook, junk journal, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you know, you'll kind of be doing your own decorating, embellishing, etc. Um, that you decide to do, but I thought I would show you the basics as well of how I put mine together. So again, I am making sure that things are facing the right side up that I want them to face. And then I'll be attaching the page um, to the other side of the binding. Again, working it almost to the edge, but not all the way to the top. And just making sure that you're holding that um, tight enough so that it adheres and it binds together. And then you've got now two pages that are attached by the little hinge. 
so you've got your inside pages and then the ones you've attached by the hinge. All right, I'll speed up the process. You can see the rest of it and then I'll come in and chat if I need to give you some more details. So I decided here that I would actually round the corners of the pages, seeing as how one of the pages that I decided to use had the rounded edges, I thought I might as well just match the rest. Um, I could have done this before gluing it all together, but I hadn't decided what I wanted to do at the time. However, I think it'll just look nice if I just round all those edges and now it just, it, it will be a little bit more cohesive um, and they don't just look nicer. So um, the next part would be for you to decide if you wanted to add a closure. I will show you what I would do if I were adding a closure to this little booklet. Um, I didn't add it to my original one because I find that it just it stays nice and close together. There's not that much that I've added to it that it flips open. But as I said, if you wanted to, I'll show you how you could do a closure and now you can kind of see the pages, the layering, the booklet taking place. I love the size. I love how quick and easy and fun you can make it with whatever pieces you've got, um, you know, left over on your desk or in your scrap bin. So here, um, I'm just showing you for this particular one, I added a little piece of fabric because I just wanted extra texture. And also I think it kind of makes the, the spine a little bit sturdier. Um, you could add your ribbon, string, whatever you want to use, and then maybe attach it with a piece of fabric. This way you're just supporting the spine a little bit more. You can just do whatever you want with that. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. I'll probably finish decorating it or adding my own ephemera to it uh, in a little bit. I hope you enjoyed the share. If you do make one, don't forget to tag me on Instagram and let me know. I would love to see what you made. As always, questions, comments, please leave them below. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a thumbs up if you want to see more of these style of videos. I have so many more videos coming up, you guys. I just have to make sure the editing is done, etc., etc. And then I will share some more fun projects with all of you. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day and thanks so much for stopping by.